What's up, Catfish KC community? It's Nick here. Hey, uh, it's been it's been a while since I've uh, given you an update on the bait tank. It's going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to show you kind of what I've learned along the way. So I've actually had this bait tank for a while now, and there's a lot of things that I didn't know when I started it. Uh, if you go back to the one of our earlier videos, it's tips and tricks. So I'll put a link to it up here. But in that one kind of showed some tips and tricks on the bait tank and I have some previous videos showing the actual build so you can kind of follow along there if you want one of these yourself. I've made some updates since then, since having it for a little while and I've learned a few things, some time saving things too. So let's get into it. I'll show you kind of what we're going through here. So right away over here, you can kind of see we've got uh, some plants and these are just regular old pothos plants. Now, I chose pothos because they're like viney and they grow well. In the earlier video, you can kind of see how I had them just suspended here in the side of the tank over here. Somebody commented and actually gave me an idea to put the roots in a two liter bottle. So that's exactly what I did. I've got a two liter bottle over here. All the roots are balled up in there. So it's actually a pretty big root ball. And they actually come out the, the end of the tip of the two liter and the fish nibble on it. And they're, they're still eating the roots. However, we got some more growth going on all along here. I've also added some driftwood in here. It's too big for me to boil, so I just left it in the tank there. It kind of floats. But the pothos is actually growing along the driftwood here. And it's got a bunch of roots coming out, um, kind of wrapping around the driftwood a little bit. I added a pleco in there and some snails because it's got a lot of algae. Uh, I've actually taken the cardboard off of the windows, and so we got a lot of natural sunlight coming in. And because of that, there's algae, but it, it looks cooler, I think, and it's a little bit better of a little ecosystem. The fish have gotten darker, kind of more back to their natural. They were kind of getting lighter with the tank not having any color inside of it, so I think that's a good thing. A lot of this is obviously for pleasure and enjoyment. Obviously, I'm not going to take those out catfishing, but it is good for the tank. The plants help actually the roots of the plants, they suck out some of the nitrates. And I also put sand over here in the filter system. So I put about four inches of sand down there and the sand actually filters a lot of the nitrites and the nitrates. So it actually makes it to where I don't really have to do any water changes anymore. When I first set this up, I was doing water changes every three weeks, changing out about 50 gallons or so. Because the other thing is I like to feed my fish. That keeps the beneficial bacteria growing and it's also kind of fun to watch it's kind of like a little fish tank down here so i have fun watching them and when the system's turned on it gets kind of loud and uh kind of actually sounds like white noise which is kind of nice actually if you're just kind of hanging out down here so this is also where i have all my fishing gear my workshop so it is kind of peaceful here in that it's like a little waterfall garden going on but because of that actual noise i also added some styrofoam just from things i've gotten shipped to me from amazon or whatever i've added some styrofoam a few inches thick over the top of the filter system the trash can there and that's just be to reduce the noise um, and it does reduce the noise quite a bit actually i'll show you what that sounds like with and without it in addition to the pothos i've actually added some frog bit and some duckweed and everything actually grows from the LED light and the sunlight. So up here I've got this LED light. You can see it's got a lot of red and blues in there. But it's coming right down on the pothos and the frog bit and the duckweed. And you can see the pothos is growing over that way on top of the filter. And so what I do is when it gets so long that it's hanging down, I'll take it and I'll wrap it around here and they'll start growing in the tank. Now, it'll start growing roots out immediately, but the fish will eat the roots so i'm sure that's good for them plants keep just growing so it's definitely helped so for food what i do is i just go on amazon and i buy the black soldier fly larvae they look like little grubs and they're dried out and you can get a big box on amazon for actually pretty cheap it's actually i think advertised as chicken feed but it's you know a big bag of it feed them that a couple times a week it's fun to watch them feed on it it's also good for the ecosystem in there the other thing I feed them is mealworms and the darkling beetles that they turn into. I have a mealworm farm. I'll show you what that looks like here. And in a future video, we're actually going to kind of go over what it looks like to have a mealworm farm. I use these little mealworms as bait when I go out for bait fishing. One of them fits perfectly on a little hook 
And it does, the, the bad thing about the millworms on the hooks is that it, as soon as you get the bite, that millworm's gone. You gotta rebate every time. Whereas a uh, earthworm, you can probably catch two or three on one little piece of bait if you're good with it. But millworms do well out there and they're good for the fish and they eat my food scraps as well. So it's kind of like a, a whole revolving system around here. But I'll show you in a future video, we'll go over what it looks like to have a millworm farm if you're interested in that. Um, or you can obviously go to the pet store and buy them in bulk and just use them as bait that way or feed them your fish that way. But uh, we'll kind of show you that here in a little bit. The other thing I've been doing regularly is washing the filter socks. The more you feed the fish, the quicker these fill up, right? It looks pretty gross and I suppose it is, but it gets dark like this and there's a lot of uh, waste in there. Um, it's been sitting out so it's actually dried. Literally all you have to do is either just like this or flip them inside out, throw it in the wash, put some, put some bleach in there and you're good to go. One important thing to note though is wait 48 hours after you take it out of the wash to put them back in your system because that bleach residue will evaporate over the course of a 48 hours but if you put it right in there you could have some remnants left over and kill all your beneficial bacteria and kill all your fish. The other thing I added in here was an aerator. Initially I had the Venturi system going on. Worked great. However, I started fiddling with it and I ruined the PVC T connector cap. I have to, actually I have to go get a new one for that Venturi to work again. But I added an extra aerator. Keeping your water level at a consistent height in your filter system is pretty important actually. So every, probably once a week or so, sometimes twice a week, I'll take my five gallon bucket, I'll take it over there and we'll fill it up with filtered water and add it to the bait tank here to make sure the water level in the filter system stays above the pump. When I added the sand in the bottom of the filter, I had to build a platform of two by fours to put the pump on it so it's raised up four inches or so above the sand level so it's not shooting sand into the actual bait tank there. I'm also gonna show you in the future the process I go through to freeze the shad. I use a vacuum sealer salt them on each side, vacuum seal them, and then put them in the freezer immediately before they start decomposing internally. Simple process, but I'll show you what that looks like. And then I have one other question for you guys. Now, if you remember in part one, when we made the bait tank, I cut off the top of the bait tank from here up. I still have that top, and I'm curious what you guys can come up with for me to utilize the top of that uh, IBC toe. Uh, I don't wanna waste it and throw it away. It can be used for something. Here's what I was thinking. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, or let me know if you have some better ideas actually. But I was thinking of taking it and putting it up here where that unused terrarium is and actually making it an indoor vegetable garden using gravel media for the substrate and then either getting an additional LED light or placing this one over there on top of it and then having an extra additional pump that'll pump water on a timer from the bait tank up to the raised garden bed up there a couple times an hour or something like that. That would also increase the filtration in the system here, get out a lot more of those nitrates, feed the plants, just kind of, it seems like a closed system that seems pretty good. Let me know if you guys think that's a good idea or if you got any other ideas that I might be able to repurpose that the top of the IBC tote for. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below and we'll see you out there.